Hello and peace be with you. In just a moment I'm going to put some pictures up on the screen and I want you to see if you can work out what the connection is between them. Your teacher might like to pause the video so you can have a discussion about it. So here they are. We've got a spiral staircase, some children on a climbing wall, some mountaineers on Mount Everest, the launch of Apollo 11 which took the first men to the moon, some people on a, sky, on a ski lift and a skylark flying. What's the link between them? I'm sure you've worked it out. They're all pictures of things going up. And sometimes we use some special words for things going up. There's a famous piece of music written for the violin, which is supposed to sound like a skylark singing as it flies high up into the sky. And that piece of music is called The Lark Ascending. There's a really famous book written about people climbing Mount Everest, and that's called The Ascent of Everest. To ascend just means to go up. And from that word ascend, we get other words ascent and ascension, which both just mean the going up of something. Thursday of this week is Ascension Day. It's a really important day in the church's calendar. In fact, it's so important that if you lived in lots of places in Europe, like France or Belgium or Germany, you'd be having the day off school for it. But I'm sorry, not here in Dorset. So what do Christians remember on Ascension Day? Someone's described it as Christmas backwards. At Christmas, Christians remember how Jesus was born in a stable in Bethlehem. You've probably sung the carol, He came down to earth from heaven, who is God and Lord of all. So on the first Christmas, Jesus came down from heaven and lived on earth. But on the first Ascension Day, he went back up to heaven, home to his Father God. Let me tell you the story. After Jesus died on the first Good Friday, his friends were very sad. But their sadness soon turned to joy on the first Easter Sunday, when Jesus came back to life. And over the next few weeks, Jesus appeared to lots of his friends and talked with them and shared meals with them. Here he is having a meal with some of them. You can see that there is bread and wine on the table in the background, which reminded them of the last supper he had shared with his friends the night before he died. On the 40th day after Easter, he appeared again to some of his friends and they walked together out of Jerusalem towards the Mount of Olives a way they'd often walked with him before he died. On the way, they passed a donkey, and that reminded them of how Jesus had come into Jerusalem about a week before he died, riding on a donkey, and how the crowds had proclaimed him as king, crying, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. They also passed some hens, which reminded Peter of how he denied knowing Jesus and how Jesus had forgiven him. They walked out of Jerusalem to the top of the Mount of Olives. Jesus said to his friends, don't worry, when the Holy Spirit comes, you will understand what I need you to do. Remember what you have seen, think of everything you have learnt and tell people my story. You will tell people right here in Jerusalem and you will travel far and wide all over the world telling people that God loves them. And then suddenly a cloud appeared and they couldn't see Jesus anymore. And as they watched, the cloud took him into the sky, leaving them standing there staring up into the sky. And then two shining angels appeared. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, 
will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Does it feel like 40 days since Easter? I wonder if you've eaten all that chocolate yet or if you've still got some left. Here's a calendar for this year. Look, there was Easter Sunday on April the 4th. And if we count on to the end of that week, that's seven days. The next week is another seven, so that's 14 days on from Easter. Another week gets us up to 21 days. Then the next week is tricky because it jumps from April on to May. But look, here we go. 28 days on from Easter gets us to the 1st of May. And then on another week, 35 days gets us to May the 8th. So we now need to just count on another five days to get to 40. Here we go. And we end up on this Thursday, May the 13th. Of course, because Easter is on a different date each year, and Ascension Day is always 40 days after Easter, the date of Ascension Day changes, but it is always on a Thursday. So this Thursday is the 40th day counting on from Easter, and the day when we remember Jesus going back into heaven. In the old days, people often talked about heaven as being up, above, somewhere. But it's not somewhere we could get to by going there in a rocket. It's more like it's somewhere outside space or time. Not somewhere you or I can go while we're alive on this earth. But Jesus is there. And I wonder what you think he's doing there. Well, the Bible tells us one very special thing that he does. He prays for us to his Father God. I love that. When I'm afraid or lonely or sad, I can remember that Jesus is there in heaven asking God, his Father and my Father, to look after me. And don't let's forget what the angels said. One day, Jesus will come back again. As always, I'm going to end with a prayer. Listen carefully, and if you agree with what I've said, do join in with an Amen at the end. Father God, those of us who are Christians believe that Jesus is there with you in heaven, praying for us. Thank you. And help us to pray for others too. We pray today for any of our family or friends who are ill or sad or in any other particular need. Please look after them and please help us to be good to them too. Amen. Thank you for listening and I'll see you again soon. Bye bye.